Hello, skateboarders. Welcome to TSM Live Show. I'm your host, Tommy Zam. I'm here with Brian Crisfield from SkaterCon. How's it going? Tell us a little about what's going on today. So SkaterCon basically uh, was formed by Adam Richards seven years ago uh, to bring skateboarding awareness, basically, you know, bring small kids into it. Uh, we have skateboard clinics for kids. We have contests. We just wanted to get exposure to skateboarding in the Phoenix area, and we are branching out. Here we are in Lake Forest, California. Oh, shit. At New Skate Park, man. Hell yeah. And then what's, going on, what's going on today? What's the what's event looking like? A lot of events, uh, a lot of contests going on today. Uh, a lot of legends are here. Awesome bands. It's the place to be today, definitely. Well, I'm ready to check this out. Awesome. You ready? Heck yeah. All right, am I good? You got it, man. All right, we're going to go in. See ya. I'm here with Steve Olson. How you doing, I'm here today, with bud? Tommy. I'm doing good. How are you doing? Good, good. So, what do you think of SkaterCon so far? I think it's great, right? I mean, all these cats slinging stuff, sporting skateboarding. Yeah. Can't and get any better. And what are you doing here? Me, I'm just showing some cats my art and stuff, and slinging whatever, whatever happens, happens. <laughs> whatever. Just clearing out old inventory. Just get, rid, get rid of all, all that stuff. So, which one's this one? What's yeah, that well, one about? Uh, that's just some original thing I did for uh, this company over in Paris. And so I did one and uh, I brought it and just to show, let people see what's going on. Deconstructive checkerboard, you know. Get all that stuff going. Uh, I mean, you know, I don't know. I think I had the checkerboard going on in skateboarding long before any of the other cats, particularly <laughs> bands, but we won't go there. Oh, we won't go there, right? No, well, we just went there, but we'll just segue out of that. <laughs> I mean, I had the first pair of vans. I had to make me a pair of checkerboard vans, and then all of a sudden they said, oh, yeah, we made these vans. Get them. <laughs> Either way, no. Vans rules. <laughs> and so are you looking forward to seeing uh, Steve up there playing? Uh, no. No? <laughs> no, I'm not interested in that band. Not at all. <laughs> no. It's not my kind of music. Well, what I is like your kind of music? music? I like all kinds of music, just not that. <laughs> I, you know, some of us can be honest. Oh, no, it's great to be honest. Yeah, no, it's the only, uh, it's the only thing I know. Definitely, definitely. Well, cool. well, Steve, well, thanks for coming on. Tommy, fuck, thanks for coming. Thanks oh, yeah, for getting, doing the interview, baby. Definitely, definitely. I hope you get something good. Oh, we're Urethane all... rules. <laughs> the wheels. We loved it. I, hey, I'm, 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 I'm gonna, I want to, actually, if you ever want to come on the... I don't the, like the band. I don't give a hey, fuck. if you ever want to come on the real show... No, just hit me up. We'll, we'll just definitely, DM me on uh, Insta. I would love to do I'm it. all over the place, but that, whatever, yeah. We'll definitely love to do Where's it. Where's your thing, in Costa? Or no, it's... we travel. Oh, okay. Yeah, we go, we do uh, back... So tell us about this history. History. So Etnies was... Uh, so Pierre Andre is someone I grew up with skateboarding in the 80s. I met him first in England. He's from France. Skateboarding was really small, 1981, farmer contest. And uh, basically we were just skating and uh, got to know him more and more. Then we both came to the US. We um, ended up getting, he wrote for Sims, I wrote for Vision, Skateboards, Freestyle. And then we just kind of traveled around together, skated down at HB Pier together. And then uh, at the end of the 80s, skateboarding just went, just fucking plummeted, imploded. <laughs> so then um, Pierre started doing the distribution for Etnies and doing the whole Etnies brand. And then I joined him in 91. And then we just did whatever it took from a skier's perspective to like just blow the brand up. So we were the, pretty much the first skier owned brand for footwear. Oh, that's awesome. Um, but yeah, you could see Pierre. Pierre's like an amazing, he's like fucking one of the most talented skateboarders ever. Um, you got all the early French kind of vibe, vibe of things going on here. Then when you get into, uh, so a funny story, the, 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 one of the, the guys in France that made all the footwear, Who's like, I want to get this guy on the on the Etnies team. And we're like, and it wasn't me. I wasn't, actually wasn't there at the time. since like 86, 87. And it was just like, yeah, we want Nazis on the, on the team. And I was just like, what? Everyone was just like, what the fuck are you talking about? That's not going to happen. You went the fuck over in them fronts, right? And, and then one day he comes over on a business trip. And he's like, he goes to uh, Venice Beach. And he goes, goes into Rip City. And he's like, 
hey, do you guys know this guy? It's the Nazis, you know, the wall ride? Yeah. Kavashar Thrasher. He goes, you know this guy? And it just happens that Mickey Reyes was working behind the oh, counter shit. at uh, Rip City. And he goes and gets him, and he goes and brings back Nazis, and that's where the Nazis shoe was created. And that's why this is all like, you know, West Hampton graphics, Nazis shoe. I mean, as we know at the time, say, Nazis was the man. Nazis and guns were pioneering the whole street evolution, oh, yes. you know? Definitely, 100%. Um, yeah, so then Nazis became a big part of the brand, and uh, it's the first pro shoe ever in the history of skateboarding. The whole concept behind it was like, why? There's a lot of skateboarders at the time that were just wearing whatever shoes, and a lot of them were wearing like uh, athletic brands, and a lot of them were wearing like, yeah, basketball shoes. Yeah. And, the, and, the, and the concept was like, why should skateboarders be, why should skateboarders be promoting basketball companies and athletic companies? Why don't skateboarders support skate brands? So then it goes back into skateboarding. Everything gets invested back into skateboarding. Um, so. Again, the beauty of that shoe is really it pioneered a whole generation and a whole evolution of skate shoes to where um, skateboarders start skating, supporting skateboarding. Yeah. So, that's right. Not to dude. say thank you for everything you've done for skateboarding for Etni. So, you kind of get to see a lot of the early graphics from, from Europe here. Um, typical. And where's your graphics, graphics at? <clears throat> I don't even have a fucking graphic. I got a They didn't up. give you a shoe? Bullshit. No, no shoe at all? What I had a pro, pro board on Vision Street. Vision skateboards, but nothing at all. No shoe. Oh, I think everyone should do a petition. Don Brown shoe. <laughs> I'll make that shoe. Uh, so then we get into like the um, the end of the 80s, and then um, you can see the whole story back then was more about durability, big thick rubber out outer lays, um, high tops. Everyone thought that oh, you have a high top and it's going to protect your ankles. Um, that was before they cut it. <clears throat> exactly. So then what? So as skateboarders, and we're kind of missing a few shoes, I think, around here, but uh -oh. we had a few shoes in, maybe, in maybe, the middle. Maybe one of the collectors so stuck back know, here. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but the story was all about looking like a skate shirt and durability. Oh, you there you are. See. Oh, shit, there I am. Fucking, there he is. There's an old washed up fucking well, there he is. skateboarder. This is a... Uh, was it Thrasher? I, I think, you know, Todd Swank has, he shot that picture back in the day down in Newport Beach. He's like, hey, we want to do a checkout for Transworld. Shot that, and then uh, Steve Rocco, I think, did the actual interview. Oh wow! How was that I think one? It was was it? See, I think it was. I fucking don't even know anymore. But yeah, <laughs> but yeah. So uh, it was it was cool. Yeah, because Steve Rocco was the team manager at the time of uh, Vision and Sims. Yeah. So, before he did World. Exactly. Yeah. So that was the early days, and then this shoe revolutionized oh, Etnies and sick. really realistic skate shoes. So as you can see, this shoe doesn't have. This is a wrap, the Etnies wrap. This doesn't have all the rubber out, outer layers and everything on it. It was all underneath, hidden underneath the the paneling. So the idea was to have a shoe that wasn't so like skate looking. It was more like that lifestyle-y kind of shoe, but could be skated in. So it's just something that um, this shoe was at the, the trade show down in San Diego, the ASR trade show. Pierre was running the booth in Sal Barbier. He came by the booth and he's like, hey, do you have any of these shoes of my size? And Pierre's like, you know, I don't have any right now. And then Pierre's like, hold on a minute, that was Sal Barbier. And he runs over and he just gives him the one pair of shoes that he had, the samples. He goes, yeah, just go fucking skate these. And then Sal got in the Plan B questionable video wearing these red shoes. Oh, shit. And at the time, there really wasn't. It was, um, it was uh, Airwolf and Vans. But all those brands were like multi-billion dollar companies. Or not multi-billion, multi-million dollar companies that were kind of plummeting. They were just going down fast. So this was a time when... the as skateboarders, we could really come through with like connecting with the whole skate community. And um, Sal Balbier just really helped boost this the, this shoe up to be recognized by every skateboarder. Anyone that made a red shoe from that time afterwards, everyone thought that it was an Etni shoe being worn because it was so like, no one made red shoes. Yeah. That's the first probably red shoe like, I remember that plan B video. red ever. So I'm again, thank you Sal Barbier for a big part of uh, making Making oh. and, and speak of the devil, the exactly, classic. Exactly, right? So then as we get into this period, where the fuck are we right now? Um, just in that, that early 90s period. So a lot of the writers were coming in. Look at that, Ron fucking Allen in the house. Look at him, there he goes, Ron Allen. Um, the, the writers would start cutting the shoes down. Sal Barbier, Chris Markovich, Carsten. Like, all these guys would be coming in and getting shoes from us with the high tops. And they're like, fuck, we want to make them low top. So they started cutting them down, duct taping them in. And 
then we decide, well, fuck, we got to start making low tops. That's what it was. So again, the whole idea of like skate shoes being this functional thing where it's like you had all these big rubber things on the outside for durability, and then having a high top shoe that would protect your ankles. Mm -hmm. Suddenly that all went out the window because it was just like, we just want good looking shoes. So there's obviously inspirations, inspirations from some bigger brands here, but that was also part of that culture. As you probably remember in the early 90s, it was very anarchic. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of like this uh, period where skateboarders almost like fuck corporations. But our way of saying fuck corporations was to like borrow well, you're their still saying that, right? corporate identity. <laughs> we still say it, but skateboarding has become so mainstream, it's kind of fucked up these yeah, days. It's yeah. kind of, you don't want to get canceled. No, we don't want to get canceled. <laughs> but back then, it was like these big brands weren't in skateboarding, but we wanted to borrow from that culture and make shoes that we would kind of normally wear just kind of outside of skateboarding, but make them skateboard. So that's where these shoes obviously have that inspiration. Sao Barbier the had classics the, right here. Sao Barbier had um, the infamous 23 shoe. So again... And y'all reissued that too, right? Yeah, so we reissued that on uh, Etnies a few times and then S uh, a few years back too. Still a highly demanded shoe. Um, but again, it was all about just uh, having fun and borrowing corporate culture and building from that. Just making some good looking ski shoes, right? Yeah. <clears throat> and then uh, then you have other things. We start building all the apparel and then we got the Etni screw right here, which is a mid top shoe. Funny story with this shoe is like, uh, Chad Barty used to love this shoe and Chad Barty's family used to distribute Etnies in Australia back in the day. Oh, really? And Globe actually took that exact shoe and <laughs> fucking ripped it off to a T. Oh, and no. started Globe just from that one style. That one style. And then it started selling and then they built other styles. And so again, it's it's no, no bad feelings. It's like, it's just more, that's what skateboarding is. It's like we all just fucking borrow from each other and grow together yeah. and fucking have a good time. It's a, it's a copycat it's, industry. Exactly. As long as you're having a fucking good time and you're smiling, fucking, or you take, take whatever it is and make it better. Yeah. That's, what, that's all good. There's a lot of obviously things missing right now in the timeline, but basically from that point onward, it's just like, Etnies really expanded into a, a, a wider kind of level of, of skateboarding and really pushed bringing in people from the outside to buy into skateboarding through the lifestyle. Yeah. And then we would reinvest into skateboarding by doing events like the Goofy versus regular contests, being able to like support like. Are y'all bringing that back? Yeah, or? Thousands of skateboarders around the world. Um, there's definitely talk about doing GVR again. Doing that, that was bad. I loved it right loved here it. at the Etnies Park. Um, we got to build the Etnies skate park right here in Lake Forest. You know, one of the first biggest uh, city brand partnerships um, through I, being able to sell to that wider audience. But what happened is obviously, as you can imagine, like the more we got out to the wider audience, the big guys started going, oh, what the fuck, you're creeping into our territory. So they just started coming in, buying everything up. So we get it. There's always an evolution to everything. But at the end of the day, it's like, what we're doing here at the, the skate con, you look around and everyone here is 110% a fucking skateboarder. Mm -hmm. And that's at the end of the day, to me, that's what it matters. Like, yep. The people that are involved with skateboarding are skateboarding. Keep skateboarding in the hands of skateboarding and reinvest back into the community and like build future generations of businesses around people that actually skateboard. Yep. To me, that's the, the, the most important thing. So that's a little bit of a quick kind of snippet of the, the timeline but at the end of the day it's like Etnies is 110% committed to skateboarding forever and just want to thank everyone out there for uh, everything you've done to support us and keep us around this long. You ready to do a shot? Another one? Yeah. Fuck it, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm out here with the owner of Gong Toys. My name is Tony Medina. How's it going man? Good, how you doing dude? Stokes. Welcome, Stokes welcome to the Skater Con. This is your first one? No, I've actually, uh, I think it was at four and five. I went to, I think it was in Phoenix in Texas. Whoa, okay. Two years back. So, yeah, it's cool that it's out here. Oh, hell yeah. So and, enjoy it. And tell us about Gonk Toys. What's about Gonk about? Toys is a uh, skateboard brand and a fingerboard brand. So, oh, we've sick. actually done some collabs with uh, S Soltech. Okay. So, uh, we've done a drop for Excel Day. We do like micro finger shoes, what? micro apparel. Yeah, we actually uh, did the the world's smallest um, skate shoe, which is actually a, uh, a full made skate shoe. What? Based, it's built exactly like an actual shoe. So we mass produce these guys and uh, we also do the apparel. For and and too, your finger fits in that, right? Your finger fits in it, yeah. I actually got some tissue paper in there right now for the puff, but what? people ride these, they do tricks in them. It is the craziest thing. Dude, that's gangster, dude. Yeah, it's pretty wild. So we were able to uh, do a couple drops with S over the last couple years for Excel Day. So we did the uh, the brown Excel OG, then last year, or this year we did the uh, black, and then uh, 
we might be uh, we might be doing these ones next year. So today I'm out here actually just chatting with Don Brown, dropping off the prototypes to okay. just to kind of you know get them a feel for what's to come. And, and where can people buy these at? Uh, you could buy our actual brand stuff on GonkToys.com, and then the Excel collab that we're going to be doing with S, it's going to be on SSkateboarding.com, and more info on that will be coming a little later down the year, probably closer to closer to May. Unless we get an earlier drop, which I'm hoping for. And, and do you have a social media? Yeah, Gonk Toys on everything: Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. Gonk Toys right here. Right there, guys. That's Follow it. them. Check it out. If you want your fingers to be yeah, we we got we got comfortable the we, right we there. Got, we got the finger pants. We got uh, finger fun, pants. We got finger pants. We got finger shirts. We got no a way. lot of '90s inspired like skate outfits. Like, so 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 your whole finger right here be oh, yeah, all yeah. pants up in the shirt. Yeah, there. yeah, Dude, the whole that's outfit. gangster. It's so it's so wild. And uh, one of the cool things is like we're really inspired by like '90s skateboarding. So one of my partners is uh, the owner of uh, Muckmouth, co-owner yeah. of Muckmouth. So he's massive into like '90s skating. It's like his it's his jam. So. We uh, find some like famous skaters runs and like people that are like very you know influential runs that, from the 90s and uh, we take some of like their clothing tips like one of the latest ones we did was like a Tom Penny windbreaker so what? yeah it's really rad so we just take some fashion tents from there and then we uh, recreate it. So guys, follow these guys. Go find them on Instagram. Buy their stuff. Support skateboarding right here. Yes. So I'm here with the owner of Shadow, Shannon Dolan. So how you doing today? Doing great. Doing great. Having fun. And, in this, and you've been coming to SkaterCon for how long? Since the first one. Do you remember the first one? Yeah. What yeah. was it like? It was uh, it was more than I expected. I, of course, first time I heard of it. Um, it was a cool event. It was actually our first year in business. So. Okay. Yeah. And tell us about the brand. Uh, Shadow Clothing. It's um, a small clothing company that I do all the uh, designs for. Um, based out of Phoenix right now. Um, it's a, a play on uh, brainwashing, uh, cult of the board, sort of, that sort of a feeling of a, of a brand. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. Okay. And then where can people find your products at? Online, uh, shadowclothing.com, shadow as in shadow but without the W. Um, and then we have a list of shops, all the shops we're in, uh, in Arizona, California, uh, New York, and then a couple places spread out in the middle. Okay, and then work, and then you have an Instagram, social media. Yeah, or? Shadow Clothing on Instagram, Shadow Clothing on Facebook, Shadow Clothing on YouTube. It's all the same. All right. I'm out here with Chad Jackson. How you doing today? Uh, I guess we're doing good. It's not raining. <laughs> and, and you start your own brand. What's it called? Uh, small beating. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little about it. Uh, it's run of the mill skateboard company. <laughs> and, there we go, right there. And where can people find these brands at? Oh, you can find them at select stores, at some places. You can find them here right now. Nelson will sell you an old one. Oh, yeah, you got an old one over here? Yeah. One right here. If you're in Encinitas, you can, you can go to Mike McGill's. Mike McGill's? Yeah. Well, what site can they go to? Look at it. Oh, let's see that one right there. There's the Andy Roy guest model. Guess Look at that, model. right there. That's the that's the face of lunch of a thousand ships. <laughs> Look at that thing. That's fresh out of prison. This one, my Andy son, Rose. my son brought this to one of the Vance print parties that I was in, and he walked around and had everybody sign it. So it's got like a million signatures, like everybody. Oh, that's sick, dude. Oh yeah. yeah. It's pretty special. Yeah, like everybody just signed this thing. Was it? I don't know what year it was. Don't know what year. Nah, we're pretty high around here. I went so many times. I don't know what year this. Well, not the Godoy's though. They're they're good. Don't 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 let me misrepresent that. I get in trouble. And so, do you have a social media that these guys can sign or what? Uh, yeah, smallbeating.com or smallbeating2. Since we got hacked from Afghanistan, smallbeating1 is all the old school shit. So smallbeating2 on Instagram. So I'm here with legendary Dune. How you doing Hi. today, brother? Good, brother. I'm well. How are you? Good, good. Yeah. How's everything going today? Uh, super good, man. It's been fun. Um, did, we just fit, wrapped up a panel with uh, Pierre Andre, Don Brown, Andy Anderson, and one of the new the shoe designers that's been with the brand Rick for 17 years. So uh, a lot of history covered in 40 minutes. Uh, I'm really inspired by Pierre Andre, just sticking it out through thick and thin. He's uh, 
one of the only skater-owned shoe brands in the world, and, and they're still crushing it and still pushing it. So his passion is uh, contagious to me. Um, we have a lot of respect for Don, just traveling with him. He's a fun guy, knows his, knows his skateboarding, knows his shit. And um, so, yeah, it's an honor for them to have me come here and uh, babble on the mic for a while. No, you definitely did a good job. <laughs> I, I heard you, man. I mean, I mean, you do, like, interviews yourself, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, part, of, part of my five jobs. <laughs> and what are the five jobs? Oh, man, let's see. You're going to make me think now. Um, I'm a consultant, now. consultant for Gotcha Clothing, which is okay. put, uh, putting its, its, its feet back in the water um, just recently. I consult for Red Bull. I do okay. a lot of... Um, grassroots events, mostly smaller stuff, and uh, occasionally MC stuff for their bigger contests yeah. as well. Uh, I have stereo um, skateboards. And by the I'm way, still, I'm so stoked on that, dude. Thanks, man. Thanks. I'm still running the web store out of my basement. Um, and then, let's see, what am I missing here? Uh, the broadcast stuff, okay. which is, you know, comes and goes, do uh, stuff for Dutour and whoever else um, is, is out there doing contests, Skate Park of Tampa a few times. Um, it's been you, endless, it's been an endless list. France, Italy, yeah. all of it. Are we going um, to see you at Tampa Am this year doing it? Uh, you know what? Manny always does Tampa Am. Okay. So yeah, I, I've I haven't been doing this, the seat of Tampa in a while. I jumped in there last year. You did a good job. Fun. I was Thanks, there. man. Thanks. You definitely killed it. Um, but it's someone new all the time, yeah, so yeah. I, I don't I don't know where I'll be. But um, yeah, and then lastly, skateboarding, <laughs> 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 which I'm trying to still. Uh, do heavily as heavily as I can yeah. um, and I have another project coming up uh, it's actually like an, uh, an action sports skate toy is about what I could say like it's a skater toy thing okay. Andy Anderson's a part of it I can't really divulge much about yeah, yeah. it but that's a new project I've been working on as okay. well so that's six okay that's good dude you're, <laughs> you're, you're a busy man oh and I'm a dad oh and that, that's, <laughs> that's way more than six so we got eight <laughs> 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 And so for stereo, do you have anything what's coming up for 2023? Uh, man, um, we just got Bryce Wettstein on the team last year, so that was, that's been exciting. Uh, bringing up some AM kids, this kid Waldo Diaz from LA. Um, and just trying to bring together a younger crew to create uh, something like a visual sound. But, uh, you know, the new generation, obviously. Yeah. Sick, sick. And then uh, this is your first time at Skater Con or you've been here before? No, first time, first time. I was like, should I set up a booth? Like, should I bring, I was like, I'll bring boards from my basement. Maybe next year. Next year, right? Yeah. All right, cool. Well, thank you so much, dude, for coming on. Thank you. Hell yeah. Yes. Definitely, definitely. in the house today. I'm here with the owner of Poseidon Foundation. How you doing, Dave? Hi. And what's your name? Michaela Ramirez. All right. And tell us a little bit about your... So Poseidon's all about inspiring youth to pursue their passions and accomplish their dreams. We started in 2007. Um, I actually have been in the skate world since 1998. No way. Yes. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, and I uh, learned to skateboard in 1996 with uh, my neighbor, and it was actually longboarding. Wow. Uh, yeah, and then in 1998, I went to an all-girls skate jam skate clinic and um, fell in love. And since then, I've just been involved with skateboarding from marketing, hosting events, um, inspiring youth. And then and um, after going abroad and working with children that are super less fortunate, um, I wanted to create a foundation, Poseidon Foundation, just to give hope to humanity. And so every year we do a humanitarian outreach um, internationally. Um, with that, we've already been able to build 14 homes for homeless families. Yeah, that's <laughs> fucking awesome. Yeah, we did a community garden in Colombia for 50 families that are still feeding them today with Techo Poor Colombia. And then also we do our humanitarian outreach fundraiser with Ladies Day at the Barracks, which I'll show you guys. Doo -doo. That's happening November 19th, and every year we choose a cause. Well, we choose one new cause, and so we always do a canned food drive for the homeless of LA. Okay. We do a skateboard equipment drive for foster and orphan youth, and then we also this year are doing a blanket drive for our native community wow, that's awesome. because um, in the native culture, they believe in taking care of their elderly. 
And due to COVID, there has been such a lack of resources on the reservations that they aren't able to get them what they need during the winter. And we felt the one thing we could do to contribute was giving them brand new blankets. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. I mean, like, having you and having your foundation doing that for the communities all around the world, that's, that's amazing. Thank you. And, and um, one more thing is, is where can people follow you or donate or, or anything like that? So you can go to Poseidon Foundation, P-O-S-E-I-D-E-N, foundation.org and hit that donate button remember don't hit that don't <laughs> tap it hit, hit it, it. <laughs> press it a couple times <laughs> and then um or you can go to our instagram poseidon foundation okay. and um as for ladies day we have a link up there you rsvp it is females only so if you identify as a female you're welcome to come can, can i ask you why Huh? Why, why is it only female only? Or? So it's really important to give girls a space where they feel they can come together and feel like they belong. Oh, and yeah. so like what we've been learning through Ladies Day, which is really awesome, we truly make it a community event. Sometimes we talk to companies and they're like, oh, who's the pros coming? Well, there's a lot of pros that come and support Poseidon, but that's not the point of Ladies Day. The point of Ladies' Day is getting other females together to skate, to lift each other up, to empower them. And since we do like little mini skate competitions that are more for fun rather than seriousness, mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of kids get their start that way. Yep, that's true. You know, because they see something and they're having fun and they're not having that pressure of you gotta win you gotta do this you gotta do that <laughs> yeah you know it, it's just about fun so this year we're only doing a young rippers jam okay where the kids just come together and they skate around yeah. and it's like a fun event and then we're also our new mission is to elevate the adaptive skate community we've always worked with adaptive skaters since 2007 in fact, we created a program because I'm also a teacher. Well, <laughs> retired teacher. Are, are, are you a real teacher? Or? Yeah, yeah. yeah I have my awesome. master's degree in special education oh, that's awesome. with the emphasis of working with children with autism. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And so one of the things we did is we created a week at Mission Meadows Elementary School in Oceanside called Ability Awareness. Okay. Because everyone's always focusing on the disability not, not the, the ability yeah. that everyone has you yeah. know we all have disabilities because yeah. we're all human yeah, exactly yeah and so why not focus on our abilities mm -hmm. and really empower ourselves and empower others by what our strengths are yep. and so um, we worked with Katie Beatty who was the first female to ever do a backflip in a wheelchair what? and so that was just so amazing to her have her come and speak to kids and you know, when we did a competition and uh, even at Ladies Day at the Barracks, we had Kanya skating against the other skater, oh, able body rad. skaters, you know? And so we've always had this community of diversity with Ladies Day. Like, I truly feel like we are such an inclusive event that we don't need to really categorize it. Yeah. Aside from just saying, if you're female, come and join us, yeah. come skate, enjoy yourself, have fun. You know, because that's truly what yeah. it's about. 100%. Yeah. So you hear that, ladies? Come down to the barracks. Come skate. November, November 19th. Right, you hear that? November 19th. Well, thank you so much for coming thank on. Thank you. No problem. So I'm here with Grant Britton. How are you doing today? I am very good. So how are you liking SkaterCon? It's pretty cool. I've never been here. This is my first year, and it's, like, pretty neat. Yeah, it's my yeah. first time, too. And, and you just came out with a book. I came out with this book called Push. Okay. <laughs> the 1980s, my skateboarding in the 1980s, and uh, that I did, you know, from the time I was at Del Mar Skate Ranch up to, you know, through Trans World, and mm -hmm. you know, it's just kind of the, my favorite photos, pretty much. So that, so the whole book, so the whole book is just basically all your photos of, of all the history from like Del Mar to all the way to now. Well. No, it's just the 80s. Okay. I was going to do a 40-year book, and okay. then it was just too much. Yeah. And then I had a couple of weak areas that, you know, I didn't leave town for a while. You know, I'd only shoot local people, so it was a lot of people that people hated, like the Donger and John Reeves and <laughs> yeah. people like that. So, 
No, just I wasn't going on tours and you know the sweaty band tours and stuff. I was doing the magazine thing, you don't raising want to, you don't, a family. You don't want to miss that, huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. So I decided just to get it down to the '80s, and even that, you know, I could have done a book three times. This is, you know, this big. What's this like? 200 and something pages. I could have done a much better, yeah. bigger book. And where can people buy your book at? Um, you can get it through Ginkgo Press. That's uh, the publisher, that's who I'm here with today. Okay. And then it's at Barnes and Noble and Amazon, and then uh, you know a few shops have had it. I've done some signings at different places. Right now, it's at um, uh, the the Photo Dark Room in Escondido has signed copies. Oh, really? The Barnes and Noble in Encinitas has signed copies. That's rad. So wherever I live near, I go in and sign. Co- <laughs> they call me up and they want me to sign copies. So, so, so. you're like this. Are you, how far are you from my house? Okay, I'll yeah. be there in a second. Well, the guy at Barnes and Noble knows that I'm. I did a talk there a couple weeks ago, and signed some, and then they got some more in, and then people have been calling them. Yeah. Because they can't order them online, they have to call them up and say, oh, "Hey, no. can I get a signed copy?" So they're doing those, and uh, yeah, mainly from Ginkgo, and, okay. and so we're on the second printing right now. We out, we sold out the first printing. Oh, yeah. Congratulations yeah. on that! Which was four thousand copies went uh-huh. like really quick. Yeah. And uh, then we're on our second printing right now. Good. So. And how was it turned out today for that? Uh, for really signing? good. We probably sold probably forty books or good, so. Good, you know? good. There were some hats. We did a limited release hat with the with the, um, Nikon, the Nikon FM2 yeah. on it. They just did it out of the blue. <laughs> you know. Not the Canon? No, because I didn't use Canon until the 90s. Okay. I used, the 80s was pretty much, the first part was I had a borrowed Pentax that Larry Bauman had a Pentax with a fish eye. Mm-hmm. That's how we started the magazine. And I had a Minolta that I had another lens for, so I would use two cameras back and forth. <laughs> and then when we got a little money, we started buying Nikon and then the FM2 was kind of the, the skate photographer's choice yeah. back then you know, right. for cameras. So. Cool, cool. And I'm an old dude, so I love gear. Well, you're not and that I love, old? I'm old. Oh, you're like, what, 35? Yeah, times two. <laughs> Almost times two. I'm 67. Are oh, you so. still young and hard, man? Well, my heart, my head and my heart are young. <laughs> the body is another matter. True, yeah. true, true. So. That's cool, man, and, and I'm so stoked on the book. I'm glad that you're on your second copy and everything. So, people, you see this, go grab it at, uh, what was it again? Uh, Ginkgo Press. Ginkgo Press, Amazon, Books No. Uh, was it Books A Million? Barnes & Noble. Barnes & Noble. You know. I, I was thinking Books A Million, remember that? <laughs> and then follow me at jgrantbrittonphotos.com. And if you want to get a signed one, DM him. Maybe he'll sign you one. Uh, the only way I'll sign stuff is people can send it to me. I'm opening myself up to a can of worms. Uh, people can send me their book with a UPS label, return label, and I will do that. There we go. You hear that? So Maybe. Possibility. Who knows? We'll see what you got to do. Hey, what's up? I'm here with Sean Clive. How are you doing today? Very good. So tell me about this. You, you got a new book out. Tell us about this book. Uh, it's actually an old book. Uh, it first came out in 2009. Okay. But they it, they keep it in print, keeps on selling. So that's a good thing. Yeah. I mean, if it's not in print like six, seven times, then something's going on, right? <laughs> <laughs> so what's what's basically in the book? Uh, the first book I did was really artist history based. Uh huh. And so it only covered like mostly the 80s and 90s. But then you know. I missed doing the first book, so I went back and did a second book, and this one has like all the boards from the 60s, 70s, and then more 80s, 90s, and kind of tapped out right there. Yeah, because you did a lot of the World Industry sticker, like sticker, not sticker, but their artwork and everything. Yeah, there was some in there, yeah. Yeah, so you got like so much history, dude. You're, you're one of the best artists out there. <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, I, can't, I can't, can't cop to that. And where can people get the book at? That's a good question. Uh, Ginkgo Press, I guess. Okay. Can they go on, on, on your DMU or something like that, get a book from you? Or? No, I don't have any. Um, occasionally we'll have them in the Strange Love store, but we, we uh, it's pretty much out of print again, so they're reprinting it for next year. Okay. And then what you got coming up for 2023? Anything good? Oh, God. Um, I'll throw you on the spot <laughs> on that one. <laughs> I have no idea. I'm still trying to get it in 2022. <laughs> you know it's right around the corner. Like I know. As soon as, soon as this gets done, it's going to be 2023. That's scary, right? It is. Well, cool. Well, Sean, thank you so much for coming on, brother. Thanks, and congratulations on your book. And guys, grab it right here. Hit the book up right here. 
Hi, I'm with the owner of NESW. What's your name? Jacob, how are you? Guys? Good, good. How are you doing today? Good. So tell us about your brand. Yeah, so we're the entrepreneurs of skateboarding. What we do is we build leaders through the skate scene. We teach skateboarders that in, instead of using skating as an outlet, you can use it as a resource to set yourself financially free. So we've got coaching programs and mentorships where you can directly learn from people that are like crushing it in business and life so that elevate you to that next level. Dude, that's fucking badass. Yeah. So what made you start this? So just traveling, I've done a lot of backpacking around the world and you know, skateboarding is like a universal language. And I saw a lot of people struggling mentally, physically, and financially, and I'm like, man, I need to help these people. And like, you see so many skaters, they fall down, and they'll do a trick like all day, sometimes for three days, right? It doesn't matter, they'll accomplish that goal just because they want to land it, but then they go and, you know, they're in a job that they don't, they don't want, or their relationships suck, and they're not applying the same mindset that they have in the park, outside of the park. So I'm just showing the correlation between skating and business, and, relationships. Dude, that's fucking awesome. Yeah. And then where can people sign up or is there a sign up or donate or anything like that? Yeah, so on Instagram skateboard mentor, you can shoot me a message and we can be in touch. You can meet, you know meet up with a, a mentor or nestworldwide.org. Every board that we sell that you see, dude, I got this signed by all the legends. Uh, every Look at that. Sick, right? That's bad every ass. board that we sell, we donate one to foster care and kids around the world. So sick. It's pretty sick. So you hear that, April? Support these guys. Go out there, follow them. NEWS, right here, dude. Go check them out. Thanks, Jake. Hey, thank you. No problem. SkaterCon 7. Hell Let's yeah, go. G. <laughs> I'm here with Ryan Sheckler. How you doing? I'm good, brother. How are you? Good to see you. And you got your new shoe, right? Yeah, this is the, uh, this is the Australia. It's my eighth pro model. It's the uh, Australia Mean Star. So it's the star of the fleet. Hell yeah, dude. I think it's sick, dude. Yeah. I like it. I love how it turned out. We kind of just went like completely brand new with everything. Uh, we could have gone the easy route and like done an old sole and kind of a new, like a similar top, but we just wanted to do something from ground up and uh, literally on the ground up. That's why we put this kind of this mark here, which is supposed to be the root. So this goes into your ankle and then you're rooted to the ground. So that has a lot to do with what Pierre and, and Don do with, you know, buy a shoe, plant a tree. So we really wanted to, like, kind of highlight that of, like, we're rooted in the ground. This is rooted to the board. The board is wood. It's like there's a lot of, like, little things that went behind it. But at the end of the day, this thing skates amazing and it looks good. So. And you designed it yourself? Yeah, me and Rick did. Me and Rick. And, and Pierre actually had a lot of good ideas with it, too. Um, it's fun, man, when you have the owner of the company yeah. super invested in the design process, which was cool. Yeah. And uh, yeah, man, we all worked on this, and, and finally he's out. Is it hard to design your own shoe, or is it pretty easy? No, I love this thing, man. <laughs> I love this thing, bro. So we're gonna see like a number two, number three of that, or a different design, or what? I don't know. I think we'll just keep going 9, 10, 11, hopefully. I've been on Andy's for 25 years now, you know, and it's Fuck like... yeah, congratulations yeah, on that, dude. Yeah, so it's been sick, you know, and like, to still be able to be in the skate world, especially nowadays, and then have my own shoe. Yeah. Again, you know, it's like, uh, it's pretty special to me. The last one, you know, was the Marana, and that was like 10 years. Oh, that was a long time ago. Yeah, so, but we didn't do a new shoe, because that shoe still does so well. Yeah. And, uh... I just, I don't know, I didn't even think to do another shoe until they brought it to my attention. I'm like, yeah, actually, let's do another one. So, yeah, this is the 8. Hopefully we can get up to the 15, you know? I, I want to see 20. Yeah, me too. <laughs> and me then, too. You, then you got your own Sandlot. Tell me about that. Yeah, Sandlot's going right now. It's uh, it's fun, dude. It's, it's just a way for me to have uh, an everlasting mark in skateboarding, hopefully, you know? Yeah. Um, it's fun. It's fun to do my own brand. It's fun to be able to do partnerships with you know, like Avril Lavigne and MGK and like bands and like get their boards going yeah. out, do merch boards, like there's really no rules to it. Yeah. Um, we're not following any guidelines, we're just having fun with it, you know? That's like, what skateboarding's about. Yeah, and I think it kind of gets lost in translation every once in a while. Yeah. Like for us, um, you know, our, our mission statement is just like, if it's fun, we're gonna do it. If it's causing us a headache, which normally, there's things that will do that, you yeah. know? Some things you just have to fight through and like, put your head to the grindstone and move, but yeah. um, for the most part, Sandlot time is just like, we're just having fun, you know? If we want to drop two boards, two new graphics, we're gonna drop two. If we want to yeah. drop six, we'll drop six, you know? I want to see a hundred now. Yeah, I mean, at, <laughs> at some point, we'd love to be able to get to that point, yeah. but uh, you know, it's fun, man. It's like, it's me and my buddy Mike, who uh, 
started the company, and then I have my mom and and uh, our our family friend Angelique running it. So yeah. it's like it's us four, and um, it's cool, man. It's cool. There's yeah. no outside influence. It's just like us and what we believe and where we want to go. And then this is your first time at SkaterCon. This is my first time at SkaterCon. What do you, what do you think I've of it? seen it before. I've seen videos of it. I've seen like the vibe before. Um, and then when I saw that it was coming to California, yeah. even if I didn't have to be here, I would have came here. Because yeah. it's super intriguing and it's super rad. The music's dope. Kids are skating and ripping. Food is amazing. And you get to see all the like six skate brands. True legends over yeah. there. Yeah. Oh, for sure. And it's there's a lot of history here right now. Yeah, yeah. So definitely. it's dope. Oh, yeah. So what you got planned for 2023? I don't know. Just skate, man. I have a baby coming in March. Congratulations. So. Are you nervous? No, I'm stoked. I'm super stoked. Boy, girl? I'm uh, having a girl. Oh, sick. Yeah, yeah. So she already, she already got the board on the side part, right? I mean, I, dude, she's going to be able to do whatever she wants, you know, <laughs> like hopefully. God willing. We're just, we're just praying for a healthy baby and so far so good. So yeah. Um, yeah, like I said, that's in March and I don't know. I'm trying to finish up my plan B part. That'll come out in uh, November or December. Been working on that for almost two years now. I had a bad injury I had to heal from, so uh, yeah, and then we'll just see, man. I want to compete, do a video part for Sandlot, yeah. try to get get a couple new riders for Sandlot. Get you out of Tampa Pro? Yeah, I'd love to do that too. I mean, I think, if, I, think, I think the first time I saw you was Tampa Am. Yeah, you're right. When you were super young. I might have been seven or eight. You had a helmet on, and yeah. I was like, whoa, who is this dude? Yeah. And he, he dropped in on that vert wall. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, the first time I met you. That's crazy, bro. <laughs> yeah, you've been in my life for a long time, man. It's yeah. pretty rad. But yeah, I mean, we'll see if Tampa works in the schedule. Um, depending on when it drops, I could be having a baby at the same time. Yeah, so. you don't want to do that. Yeah, <laughs> I got to go with what's, uh, what's crucial. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Well, well, cool, cool. Well, congratulations oh, on everything, homie. Yeah, dude. Thank, thank you, you guys always, thank man, you. for the love. Thank you, thank Appreciate you. Definitely. I'm here with Eric Dressen. How you doing? Great, thanks. So, just... What do you think of SkaterCon so far? Oh, I love SkaterCon. I've been coming out. I always go to the Arizona SkaterCons the last few they had and stuff. So this is neat to be here in California and here local, you know, here in uh, Edney's Park. It's yeah, it's pretty cool. It's different, yeah. huh? Yeah, because I, I, I always drive out there with my friends and then all my other friends want to go, but they can't make it out there. So they're all here today. And, it's, it's right. and everybody's happy to see you, huh? Yeah, it's great. So what's your favorite thing about SkaterCon? Uh, just, I don't know, just to see like, you know, real real good friends and real like meet a lot of fans and just like hardcore skateboarders or, you know. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. And then, um, so what, you got anything planned for 2023 or anything? Uh, maybe traveling, maybe going to Japan and that next year is uh, Santa Cruz's 50th anniversary. Oh, sick. So we got a bunch of stuff planned for that. Alright, all right. yeah. so anything you want to say to anybody? Uh, no, I wish you were here. <laughs> so I'm here with uh, Lance Mountain. How you doing? I'm good. So th how you like SkaterCon, man? It's fun. I, I like it. I went to the one in Tucson. That's the first one I went to. Okay. And so uh, this one is really close. So yeah, um, actually they're very different, uh, Tucson from here. But yeah, it's really cool. It's great to see everybody. Got to see Dwayne Peters sing. I know, right? I haven't seen that for a while. So it's good to see him doing good. Yeah. And, awesome. and, and what's the difference between Tucson and here? Uh, Tucson, you're, uh, I was definitely um, meeting people I hadn't seen for years or never seen. Mm -hmm. And here was um, people I knew. Yeah. It, it's California, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so today you're showing your art, right? Is that what uh, you're doing? Yeah, mostly art, yeah. Mostly yeah. art? And how, like, art. how long have you been drawing? How long have I been drawing? Yeah. Uh, my dad had me drawn when I was real little, so. So I was like yesterday. Yeah. Uh, since I was five, ten, I don't know. But um, <laughs> drawing, I kind of started drawing a lot, hanging out with Neil at Whittier, and we started making our own magazine, and he did his own graphic, and kind of that's when I started doing stuff, trying to figure out how to do stuff for skateboarding. Yeah. Um, other, before that, we kind of just do our own stuff because we couldn't. You know, you couldn't find it. You couldn't find a Dogtown board. Or you couldn't find an Alba board. So we just bootleg our own stuff, <laughs> make <laughs> make our own T-shirts and stuff. So we're always kind of like everything I do is based on just what we love skateboarding. Yeah. No, yeah. definitely, definitely. I mean, your artwork's amazing. Yeah. I mean, how'd you come up with that character? The uh, the Doughboy. Yeah. It's the Doughboy is not even mine. Oh really? Woo! That's uh, a good one. Uh oh. No, it's uh, it's actually very 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 first time it was ever drawn. I was tr it was in the 90s when um. Uh, 
all the all the graphics got very simple and whatever and I just wanted to do a graphic that was just a thin little line under the trucks and I had drawn all these different things um, different tons of different graphics that look like that and I was going through an art book and there was an art book of this guy running and I was like oh how about that <laughs> and it turns out like it got changed it was like yeah when it came to the actual production it got big and changed and, and so once I did that I did another board based on the future primitive where I drew yeah, I remember that. all the characters from that thing but it started from this just drawing book that's where it started yeah, um, my, my first board was yeah. actually your board that, that, uh, the, the, the running one or yeah, the, the future primitive the running one yeah that was yeah. my first board my buddy uh he, he, history over there. yeah he skated vert and someone left it there and then, a smaller and he, board too. yeah and he came to my house and was like Hey, I got you complete. All oh, right. And I was like, oh, this is Lance Mountain. That was, board. Like, that was like my street board compared to my bird board. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. And, yeah. And then what you got going on for 2023? Uh, go see the grandkids some more. <laughs> How many, what grandkids? How many good grandkids? Five grandkids. Holy shit, yeah. dude. Congratulations, I guess. Yeah, it's awesome. My boy has four boys and one girl. Man, they all skate too? They take after? Um, they skateboard. Okay, yeah. okay. But, uh, they're all. One plays piano, one dance. It's awesome. They're awesome. So, so are yeah, we, are we gonna see a Lance Mountain fam or a Mountain Family I did skate a, video? Uh, no, I don't know. Probably not. But I, I did do a, a little <laughs> limited, limited, different uh, edition board mm -hmm. that, uh, like, I had a board once my son drew when he was four. That I did. I don't know if the family board, like yeah, the pop board. I and that. I just did a, a little limited thing where I had the grandkids draw it. It looked like kind of the same but different. Oh, what? And it was awesome, man. Put, to put a little tear in your eye a little bit. It still does. I, 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 we're not talking about. Let's talk about skateboarding. <laughs> yeah, I could I could uh, do grandkids all the day. Oh, yeah. they, they're not they're not in California anymore. So you think that SkaterCon has, has helped out the skate industry a lot? Dude, I, it's yes, it's awesome. SkaterCon is awesome. It's, it gives play, it, it's it's it gives play like all these things give us. I mean, most of us don't really get to see each other until we do these things. Yeah. And it gives us this community and stuff, and it gives a lot of people like. Um, an opportunity to see and be part of skateboarding in the way they are because skateboarding is so broad um, it's it's in so many different places now you know um, and this is kind of like a lot more of a, a soul of what kind of people did before where it's like they, they they just poured what they were about into stuff individually Eddie Radigi Jason Adams you know like, yeah. and Salva and like all these guys just going, this is what we're about. And it, there's, there's a little bit more um, the past soul of what skateboarding is rather than just a plank board to be technically yeah. good and practice to get to an event. Yeah. And so I think it's very healthy that um, younger skaters see that, hey, you know what, this this can turn into something that will hang with you forever. Yeah, and also too, it's like history. There's a lot of these, a lot of these people that see these boards, it's history. Yeah. You know, like it's just like wow, the graphics, the, the nose, the shapes, and, and it's crazy how kids nowadays yeah. are skating those type of boards. Yeah, and hopefully, hopefully the new kids will like make their history and love it as much that it will keep having all that feeling to it rather than just a. I mean, that's the thing that separated it from the sports that we skated. Yeah, there was so much more than just one aspect to it, and uh, I think SkaterCon really uh, offers all those things. Yeah. I like it. Oh yeah, it's a lot of fun. I, this is my first yeah. time. Yeah. I finally, finally made it. They always ha asked me to come out to Phoenix. Right. And I'm like, oh, I got something going on, something yeah. on. But when I heard it was here, I was that's like, I, I'm here. That's <laughs> what I always did. And I luckily went to that Tucson one, and it was, it was well worth it. It, it blew out. your mind, huh? It was good. There was a lot, just a lot of time to meet people that you hadn't seen for a long time. Yeah. And are never saw because we just don't travel and uh, demo and tour as much as we used to. Yeah. So. I think the last first time I met you was uh, for Walton Beach. It was a oh. uh, firm and Plan B. Oh, it's probably been firm and girl, probably. Oh, it was a firm and girl. Yes, yeah, so it was firm and yeah. girl. Sorry, I yeah, get those girl, two. Girl talk to firm. Too. I always get those guys, you know, yeah. basically plan B. But yeah, firm and girl. It was the first time you guys yeah. went to the foundation in Fort Walton Beach. It was okay. Beach Plus that hosted you guys. Yeah. That was the first time I, I saw you guys and Dude, everything. That was, that's rad. That was yesterday, right? Those are some good times. <laughs> that, that was yesterday and years ago. Yeah, that was a fun little thing. I had a great time on that. But anything you want to say to the audience or anything? Uh, anything you want to like shout out? Just or? keep skating. Enjoy. It's fun, man. Um, and I think people know that, so I don't have to say anything. <laughs> so I'm out here with the Blockhead crew. So I'm going to take a little break, and I'm going to pass the mic to my boy, Laban. Yeah. Thank you, sir.
Welcome to the blockhead hour. That's going to only be a couple minutes because we've got to keep it quick. We're here at SkaterCon. We're going. What? You got something to say, Dave? No, I don't. I don't. You got something to say, Dave? I don't. Okay, well, we're here at SkaterCon, and uh, it's been a few years since Blockheads had a, a booth. I want to say it was in Arizona in 2019, pre pandemic. But Dave is back with a vengeance and with some new boards. We're talking sign Jim Gray's. Some, some uh, new from 1987 boards. Yeah, reissues. 1987. And some new from uh, 1985 boards. So if you're down for 1985 or 1987, you've come to the right place in 2022. But there's also newer stuff, like this. 90s. 90s Rick Howard right here. 90s Rick Howard on a modern shape. So that's not a reissue but it's on a modern shape, but it's the original graphic, you know? So there's stuff like that here. So when we're talking blockhead, I mean, just look at these, look at these graphics. Look at that shape, look at that nose. That's all you gotta know. <laughs> what nose? And, oh, and uh, what else is rad? These. Oh yeah, the dirt clods. These dirt clods, you can ride on the roughest shit, like, yeah. Combine the dirt, combine the rough stuff, connect the dots. Yeah, we skated yeah, we, all through the desert on rocks. Yeah. In the rain. Okay, this is just turning into like an infomercial. An infomercial. What else you got? <laughs> it slices, it dices. <laughs> what else does it do? No, uh, no, it's rad being at Skater Cons. Rad talking to you guys again. Last time I saw you guys was in my backyard at Bongersville. And uh, maybe you guys will be back for Bongersville. 2023 yeah. something always evolving Bonkersville. always changing always evolving all right i all right. I, I geared it to Bonkersville, but let's bring it back to blockhead because yeah. that's where we're at we're here at blockhead and uh 19, oh yeah. sam cunningham board a rare sam cunningham board there was only one more left and it was a second this thing this thing went up and it was immediately sold like value like but there's more sand boards coming uh, early next year. Or early maybe, next year. Maybe even late this year. Maybe late this year. At Christmas, they're at, maybe? They're at the wood sh in the wood shop right now. But these days, you know, getting getting stuff, it's not easy. It's hard to get. These hey. boards took a year and a half to get. Now they're here. Um, you know? They are. So should we talk about anything else? Anything else we should talk about? Whatever. Hey, this is the Blockhead Hour that's only going to last a couple minutes, and we've already gone overtime. That's how we do it here at Blockhead. Blockhead just took a tour to Montana, which was awesome. Oh, wait, say it again. Blockhead uh, toured Montana. We hit uh, nine parks in six days. Yeah, Blockhead tour. Back on it. We're... But it was actually called the Old Mantana oh, yeah, Tour. Old Mantana. Because we're a bunch of old dudes that still want to ride skateboards and still have a, a bunch of fun doing it. Omar, let me just let me just show that Omar board real quick. Yeah. Boom. Ride the magic carpet. Yeah, and then we did. We went to, man, I've been traveling a bunch, dude. Oregon, Sacramento, uh, Detroit, uh, Montana, it's, back in L.A. It's just like the old days, but totally different. Yeah, but totally different. <laughs> it totally, hurts more. Totally it hurts older. more to jump down stuff. <laughs> I don't want to jump down stuff anymore. Show me where the curbs are. I want to slap you. Uh, what else? Uh, anyways, that's your blockhead hour. Yeah. If you have any more questions... Uh, hit up Blockhead through the uh, the old Instagram or go straight to the website. And uh, you know what? Uh, have fun out there. Uh, we love you guys. Thanks, man. BlockheadSkateboards.com. Right. Skate forever. Yeah. Yo, right, get this shit. Tony Brisenio. So tell us what's going on with you guys. Well, we've been around for about two years and we're growing organically and proud to do so. Well, you know, growing organically is the best. It is the best way, you know, and it's just rooted in skateboarding, music, and making stuff, being creative. Yeah. And we're just here for it, you know? And so, how did you start the brand up? What was the idea? Well, my background is I skated professionally in the 90s and worked in the apparel industry uh, ever since then. So, when I had the opportunity to create something on my own, I mean, there's no doubt that it would be, you know, rooted in skateboarding, music, and everything that 
is important to me and what I believe skateboarding is about. Hell yeah, that's fucking sick, dude. And then you can build a team. Who's your team riders? Well, right now we have AJ Nelson, we have Yoda. I think everyone knows Yoda, Yoda right? Yep. Sam Fitzsimmons. Oh, Sam Fitzsimmons. Uh, yeah, Sam. Um, who else do we? Dude, I'm drawing a blank right now. <laughs> oh, you know your team riders. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Seriously. Is this live? This isn't live at all. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I'm just drawing a blank. But anyway, but yeah, we got a bunch good, of good rad guys. Yeah. And then you got anything planned for 2023? Something special for these people? Something know? special? We're, you know, start, we're going to start hitting more events. Okay. More events, uh, do some more traveling. Okay. And uh, continue to make our videos. You know, we concentrate on making these like little documentaries and really kind of showing a little bit of the background of certain things that we feel is important you know in our culture yeah so. and where can people get your product at well right now you can go commonyouthbrand.com um that's the best way we got some a handful of shops in southern california but uh website's going to be the best all right so you hear that guys common youth head to their website grab that shit mm. see so a long time ago i used to tell on people and my mom used to say yo when you point one finger three point back at you. I was like, what are you talking about, mom? She said, every time you point one, three point back at you. I was like, damn. So like you're trying to tell on somebody, what did you have to do with it? So it's like, one point out, three point back. One point out, three point back. Check it. One point out, three point back. One point out, three point back. Check it. One point out, three point back. One point out, three point back. Cause it's you, yeah it's you. You see, one point out, three point back. Ha! One point out, three point back. One point out, three point back. Cause it's you, yeah it's you. Spiritually divided, understand intellectually ignited. Never understood, but tried to be knighted from that castle when the sun. But it never happened that way. So I had to parlay my existence, ready to do the distance, but understood it. But this existence at this type of level, cause any color of my brother can be a devil. Mess with the wrong individual, you can find yourself in trouble. So you need a friend there like Barney Rubble, someone that'll burst your bubble. Check it on the reels. Because why? I said uh, one point out, three point back. One point out, three point back, black. One point out, three point black. Cause it's you. Yeah, it's you. One point out, three point back. Hey, one point out. And three point back. One point out, three point back. Cut it's you. Yeah, it's you. Check it. Mm. Jay Fonzo, you know how it goes. Woo! Everybody helping out. Appreciate everybody who helped out. Jesse and Laban, man. Where y'all been? The family reunion. <laughs> Check it out, y'all. And it goes. Know when the deal remains calm existence. Intellectually driven, gases think tank for distance. For instance, Intel's got ample persistence. No ambivalence, just incandescent spans we generous. Flowing with dialect through interjects of introspect. Verbal and vocal price time to collect, now come correct. Select, select, forget, dealing with the retrospect. Neck level dialect, it's the eject with no respect. Flowing for real, there's no other way to deal. Appeal only to those deep with words that they'll feel. In the cranium, growing style. Geranium, in a right, this causes photosynthesis in the subterranean. Speaking with intellect, part of the conscious sect. Relentless message conveyance, perceptions, perfect. A tradition of hip hop addiction. Vocal friction, always spoken intelligence, scintillating in my diction, y'all. That's right, y'all. Always spoken intelligence, scintillating in my diction. Uh-huh, you got it. Always spoken intelligence, scintillating in my dick.